Uh, hi there, uh, I'm Charles Wright, Chief Scientist at Azimuth Systems, and I'd like to talk a bit today about uh, channel modeling and applications to the Wi-Fi channel models in particular. So, first, we've got uh, the question, what is uh, propagation modeling? And the basic idea is that we want to model the effects of propagation of radio uh, signals through uh, a, a propagating environment, in this case, uh, something terrestrial. So we have transmitter on a tower, and we have a handset uh, in somebody's hand, uh, in a car, in a building, or something like that, and it moves around. There's a lot of scattering going on in the environment off of trees, buildings, other automobiles, what have you, things that uh, reflect electromagnetic waves, typically something metallic and also things that aren't metallic. Um, and the three effects that uh, occur from this that are important for radio reception are multipath, fading, and mimal correlation. Now, I'll, I'll motivate this by talking about multipath and fading and mimal correlation will be a subject for a different, um, different chat. But uh, just to get to what we really want to talk about, which is the Doppler spectrum, which is a result of fading. So when you have a, t a tower transmitting, you can imagine that it sends out these RF waves in all directions. And they scatter off of things, as I said. And they reflect, and some of them arrive at the desired receiver, which is some handset. And since they all came from different paths, they all have slightly different propagation delays, and they will interfere with each other either constructively or destructively due to the, uh, the nature of the waves. So if you can think of this as if you drop uh, a rock into a pond and you see the waves bouncing off the edges of the pond and coming, converging back together, and you see interesting patterns of overlapping waves, it's the exact same kind of process. So that's what creates um, the multipath, and that creates, due to different delays, that creates frequency selectivity, and that's also a subject for another uh, different chat. Um, the fading happens when we start moving that terminal around in its environment because it's moving through this interference pattern and sometimes the waves reinforce and sometimes they cancel and the scale of distance that uh, the, the handset needs to move is on the order of the wavelength of the, of the electromagnetic wave. So as you have um, a, a user walking around or a user moving in a, in a car, then uh, the, the rate at which the, uh, the fading occurs depends on that velocity and it depends on the wavelength of, of the transmission. So, uh, the way we describe this is first we describe it at, in terms of its amplitude distribution. Now that's commonly uh, well known as Rayleigh distribution. So Rayleigh distribution, I can draw a quick example here. It's basically something kind of like that. And so that's the amplitude of the fading. And there's a, some math that explains why it should be that way. And I'm going to skip that for now. Suffice to say that it starts off as complex bivariate Gaussian. And if we take the amplitude of that, then the distribution that results gives you the Rayleigh distribution. Okay, that's the short one. Okay, now that's the amplitude distribution, but that doesn't say anything about time. Now, to talk about time aspects, we refer to a Doppler spectrum. A Doppler spectrum is created by simply sampling the received waveform lots of times, putting it through an FFT or what have you to do a spectral estimation and you will get something that kind of looks like 
this for um, mobile radio environment. Kind of looks like that. In fact, theoretically, these cusps go to infinity, uh, but in reality, they, they don't, right? You, you measure it on a spectrum analyzer, it obviously can't go to infinity. Um, so let me label some features of this. This would be a Doppler, a maximum Doppler represented by, uh, let's, this is a good spot. Let's see, where our handset is right here, and we've got all these different reflectors around it. Then, my skill as an artist is pretty limited. So, if we're moving this way, then sometimes we're moving directly toward a reflector. Uh, let's 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 draw the base station over here. Okay, so the base station is over here, and let's say that we're going this way. So now we're driving directly toward the base station. Any Doppler shifts that occur will be the maximum because we're driving directly, and anything reflected from the rear and hitting the mobile station will be at the negative maximum, so the negative max Doppler. And then everything reflected uh, from the other scatterers will fall somewhere in between. And as a result, with this model, you get this characteristic Doppler spectrum. Okay, now, the importance of the Doppler spectrum in terms of radio reception uh, is related to, in the receiver, they have to track the changes uh, to the channel Channel estimation goes on continuously in an LTE receiver so that they can recover the signal. And the shape of this Doppler spectrum governs the choices they make in that channel tracking algorithm. So you can see that would be rather important. Okay, so that's um, the classical mobile uh, spectrum, often known as Jake's, uh, by William C. Jake's radio engineer from the 60s and the stuff hasn't changed.